Hi, I'm here to walk you through the 2014 Harm Reduction Survey. I hope by now you have received your survey package, uh, which should include uh, a few pieces of paper. One is the survey instructions, which includes a link to the online survey, uh, which you can do with your participant or the participant could do themselves. Uh, there's also some information in there for my contact information, my email, my telephone number, uh, you should also have received a refusal tracking sheet, which looks like this. Uh, and this is for us to collect some information about how many of your participants at your site uh, declined to do the, to, to do the survey. Uh, we don't need uh, you to know the exact age, just uh, I guess, um, and, and do a little check work so that we can provide this information in our analysis. I've also included a sheet with our contact information. So if your survey participants wanted to contact anyone here at the BC Centre for Disease Control to find out more about how this data will be used, uh, any privacy concerns, if they want to personally get a copy of last year's survey, um, or any information at all that uh, you don't feel able to answer, uh, please provide them with this, uh, this little piece of paper that has a email and a phone number on it. You'll notice that this year's survey is a little bit longer than last year's survey. We've added some questions uh, that came out of several stakeholder uh, meetings and concerns, uh, such as the Harm Reduction Services and Strategies Committee, uh, user groups such as Van Do, um, various uh, evaluation feedback from the health authority representatives, and other sort of interested stakeholders. Probably the most major addition is the separate questionnaire that we have regarding the change from methadone to methadose. Uh, we were very interested in exploring some of the uh, you know, participants who were on methadone during this change to evaluate some of the concerns that uh, the user groups have been bringing forward to us. To begin with, uh, if we're sitting down with your participant, please let them know that it's going to take around 15 minutes of, of their time. Um, and assure them that all the responses will be kept in entirely confidential and that this is a completely anonymous survey. No information regarding their name uh, or where they live will be tied back to, to them when we do our final data analysis. Um, again, if they had any sort of concerns uh, that you didn't feel that you were able to answer, please just pass along the BCCDC contact email and telephone number and we will do our best to explain the, the privacy policy. So when you're sitting down with your participant, it's best to read aloud the privacy statement as not all participants will be able to read. Uh, perhaps they don't have their glasses and the writing is too small and they may have some questions for you. Um, so that would probably be the best first step is to read aloud the, the paragraph that's at the very top here of, of the survey. And after you've read that, ask the participant if they're willing to continue. If they are, please continue on with the survey. And if they say no, just not mark down no on the refusal tracking sheet. Give an estimate regarding their age and use your best judgment to uh, fit them into a gender category. Moving on, um, if the first participant is willing to, uh, to conduct the survey, when you're conducting the survey and the participant says to you, I don't know, I don't want to answer this, I don't feel comfortable answering this, uh, we have provided a option for every single question that is prefer not to say. Um, so if, if the participant says that they are unwilling, they do not understand, they don't feel comfortable answering that particular question, simply select and check off prefer not to say. There's absolutely no requirement that a participant answer a question. Uh, we would like people to feel as comfortable providing the information uh, that we're asking them as, as possible. Uh, there may be times where someone may would like uh, more explanation and if it's something that you're not able to sort of uh, breach an understanding about, just select prefer not to say and move on to the next question. Uh, our first question is, what do you self-identify as your gender? We've provided the option male, female, trans, other, or prefer not to say. Uh, we would like the person who is doing the survey to answer for themselves. Please don't make an assumption uh, in regards to in, into their gender, um, even though you may know some, some more intimate details that we would like 
to know what the person has self-identified as. Our next question is asking how old are you in years? Uh, in this box we would like you to actually write in a number, uh, so not their date of birth, uh, not the year of their birth, but the actual number of years old they are. For example, if someone is 37 years old, simply write in 37 in that box. Our next question is asking about ethnicity. We would like people uh, to identify what they, which group that they identify with most. Are they First Nation, Métis, Inuit, or non-Aboriginal? Other is an option there if someone is of mixed heritage or is of a heritage that they would like to identify in that box, or there's prefer not to say. If someone uh, tells you that they are part of uh, you know, a mixed group, uh, you could ask them, is there one particular ethnicity that they identify with more? Or you could simply write in what they tell you in that other box. If the person has identified as First Nations or partly First Nations, we would like to know whether they are status or non-status, um, or if they would prefer not to say. Sometimes people don't know if they have a status, and you can simply select, I don't know, for that option. Our next question here, question number four, is do you feel respected when you access harm reduction supplies from this site or the outreach team? This may be a little bit of an uncomfortable question for a participant to answer. We realize that, um, you know, if, if, if you sense any sort of hesitancy at this point, it's simply okay just to select, prefer not to say, and move on. We do recognize that some participants may not feel very um, open about sharing their experiences, especially if they've had some negative experiences. Um, we do want to, in general, try and collect as much information in regards to this question as we can. Uh, but again, let's not pressure people. Um, if someone is sort of hesitating to answer, um, please just select prefer not to say and simply move on. We again are also asking about people's sexual orientation. This could also be an uncomfortable topic for people to reveal. Um, so if someone is hesitating to answer, uh, simply select prefer not to say and move on. The categories that we've provided are straight, gay or lesbian, bisexual, queer, or other. Um, again, if someone identifies as uh, a, an orientation that is not included in these categories, you can simply write that in the other category. Our next question is talking about the location of where the, they are doing the survey. The location should be pre-filled in for you, um, so and that would be based on the city where the harm reduction distribution site is that we sent the surveys to. For example, if you were living in Dawson Creek, the location there would say Dawson Creek. Simply ask that person, is that, do they live in Dawson Creek? And they can answer yes, no, or prefer not to say. If they say no, I actually live in a different city or town, um, then you can write that in there. Uh, under the no, I live in a, and specify the name of the city or town or location that, that they tell you. Our next question here is asking, how long have you lived at your current address? We realize that some people are, are transient and they perhaps don't have a fixed address, are couch surfing, um, and there is a, an option to select that. Uh, what we mean by their current address is the address that where they are sleeping and staying with right now. Uh, it's not their hometown, it's not the place that they usually stay at, uh, it's the place that they are living at and going home to uh, at the end of this survey. Our next question is asking, how did you get here today? So again, if someone is, uh, you know, typically takes transit into this harm reduction site, but today they bike, then we are interested in how they got here today. And in that situation, you would select bike. Um, we are looking specifically for what happened today, uh, not what they do in general. When we're asking how long did it take, um, here we're interested in uh, from the point that they left their house with the intention to come to the harm reduction site, on average, how long did it take them to get there today? Um, again, if they have a, on average, it takes them 10 minutes, but today it took them 30 minutes, we're interested in how long it took them to get here today. At this point, uh, we ask that you do a check-in with your participant. Uh, the next set of questions are going to be stepping into the substance use realm, and we want to ensure people that their privacy is going to be respected, uh, that the contents of the survey will, will remain anonymous. And it's always just a good idea to check in to see if people are feeling comfortable. 
the above questions that we asked are a bit of a warm up. Um, and so they can get an idea about the pace of the questions. You're about a third of the way through at this point. That's, that's something that you could tell them. Um, so just please ask them if they're okay to move on. If they answer no, just simply record that on the refusal tracking sheet. And if they say yes, then we will move on to the next set of questions. After you've done your check-in with your participant, you'll be moving on to the questions of the survey that are asking about their substance use and supply gathering habits. Question 10 asks, are you here today to pick up supplies for yourself, for someone else, or perhaps you're there for another reason, such as accessing a nurse? For this question, if someone is there for multiple reasons, uh, please select all of the reasons why they were there. Um, it's okay to have more than one check mark for, for this question. Now, question 11 is asking how often the participant picks up supplies over a month period. So that month being the month that they we're in right now. This is around mid-July. So from mid-June to mid-July, how often would they identify that they come in every week to pick up their supplies? Um, is it a few times a week, once a week? Maybe it's only once a month. Um, maybe this is their first time there. Select their best answer um, and ask them just to have their best estimate about how many times that they have come in. Uh, question 12 is asking about their difficulties. Um, so this is if they've ever had any difficulty. So maybe you know nine times out of ten they have never had any difficulty picking up supplies over the last month, but one time they did. Um, we're interested to know what happened in that one time. So this question is ever in the last month. When we move on to question 13, uh, we're asking why they had any difficulty. Uh, and if they hadn't, if they said to you, no, I have had no problems getting supplies over the last month, then you can simply select that first option, had no trouble getting supplies. If they did have some, some issues and it was more than one issue, we provided several options there. Please select the best options that, that they tell you. Uh, it, again, it could be more than one option. If there is something there that they did not, uh, that was not included in this list, we do provide a space for you to write in what the issue was. We're also interested if they had trouble getting a certain supply. For example, if they couldn't get the water vials or they couldn't get the right size needles. We're interested to know if there is a shortage happening at your particular site and what they had trouble accessing. Question 14 is asking, have they injected any type of drug over the last month? Here we are not interested in things like an insulin injection. Here we are interested in a substance such as heroin or crack or crystal meth, any sort of uh, illicit substance um, or diverted prescription substance that they have injected. Um, and we're interested in, in just over the last month. So even if it was just once in the last month, we're still interested in, ask, in, in knowing that. And in that circumstance, you would select yes. Question 15 is asking specifically about supplies if they had any troubles getting needles. Perhaps someone has said to you, well, I don't use needles. Then you can select that option, I didn't use needles in the last month. Question 16 is, we're here just to try and assess uh, how often people are sharing needles. So we're asking, in the last month, have they ever used a rig that's been used by someone else? Uh, even if they cleaned it, we're interested in knowing that. And we're also interested in knowing, have they ever given someone a needle to clean with? This may be a sensitive topic for some people. They may feel that uh, there's a judgment around doing that sharing. Uh, again, if there's any hesitancy, just uh, select prefer not to say and simply move on. Uh, question 18 is asking whether you've used a, a pipe to smoke crack or crystal meth in the last month. This could be any type of pipe uh, at this point. We're just interested in knowing whether they've used any type of pipe in the last month to smoke either of these two drugs. Uh, questions 19 and 20 and, and 21 uh, go on about asking specifically uh, use behavior around smoking crack and crystal meth. If someone has said to you that they don't smoke, there are options to say, I didn't use a pipe or I didn't smoke that particular drug for each of those particular questions. So you can simply select those and move on. Questions 18 to 24 are asking around use and behavior connected with smoking of crack and crystal meth. 
and there are options available there for you if you, your participant says that they don't use a pipe or they haven't used those particular drugs. Um, you can simply select the best option and move along to question number 25. 25 is where, where we're interested in seeing people's behaviors and substance use over the last week. So that's the last seven days. Um, there are a number of options there. We have listed things like alcohol, tobacco, crystal meth, crack, methadone or methadose, morphine, etc. as well as providing a space for you at the bottom where if there are other drugs that are not on that list, you could they could identify what drug that is and you could write simply write that in. So we're only interested in what has happened and what they've been consuming over the last seven days. Um, so a simple yes or no, have you used that substance over the last seven days? Our next question is, did you use it every day? Um, so if someone only used it once a week, they would answer no. If someone used it multiple times a day, every single day, that answer would be yes. If someone binged on one particular day and then didn't use for two or three days and then binged again, the answer would be no for that particular question. Uh, in the column, how did you use it? We're interested in the method of ingestion. Uh, again, if they say that they did smoke it and they've injected it, you can select both of those options. Um, if they smoked, injected, and had another way of consuming that substance, you could, you could circle all three of those options. Uh, so whatever uh, they reveal to you and tell you about how they consume that drug, you can select as many options for that particular drug as, as they state. Moving on to some of the uh, substances such as marijuana, morphine, fentanyl, some people have prescriptions for this drug. Now that prescription that they may be using over the last week and consuming may not be their own prescription or it may be a, pr a prescribed drug that they have had in the past that they don't currently have. Um, so we're just interested in do they typically, would they identify that they typically have a prescription for this drug? Um, and they can say yes or no at that point. Um, if they typically are using someone else's prescription, the answer would be no. If they typically have a prescription, but that prescription has lapsed, they would, you could answer yes. Um, again, it's always best just to let the person sort of decide for themselves how, how that best fits. If, you really, if they really don't have an answer for you about yes or no, uh, simply just make a mark on the side of the page as other, and we will note that in our analysis. The last set of questions here from 26 to 31 are asking around people's experiences with overdoses. Um, we are wondering whether they have experienced an overdose in the last six months, whether they were administ administered Narcan, who administered that Narcan, and whether they have seen an overdose and they themselves have administered Narcan. Uh, we are very interested in following up uh, with the results of our take home naloxone kit and these set of questions are there to address that. Our final question for the main survey, question 32, is asking whether people were on the orange flavored methadone when it transitioned to the cherry flavored methadose. This switch happened early this year on February 1st, 2014. The answer would be yes if someone was continuously on the program and therefore took the orange flavored when it transitioned to the cherry flavored. The answer would also be yes if someone was recently on the orange flavored methadone, stopped for a while, and then restarted methadone maintenance with the new cherry flavored methadose. The answer would be no if someone has only experienced uh, orange flavored methadone and then have not, have not restarted their methadone treatment. The answer would also be no if someone has only experienced being on the cherry flavored methadose. So in essence, we need people to be able to answer whether they can compare their experiences from the two different medications the orange flavored methadone, and then after February 1st, the new cherry flavored methadose. If a patient or one of your, your participants is really unsure on how to answer this question, simply select prefer not to say and end the survey at this point. If your participant does say yes, then please transition them on to the methadose survey. It's a short survey, maybe just another two to three minutes of their time, and it would be much appreciated to gain this feedback. Uh, in general, these questions were developed with a user group, the uh, BC Association of People on Methadone, as well as Bandu, and we've crafted our questions uh, based on people's experiences uh, within those groups. Our, our first question is asking about the taste. Uh, we've heard some feedback regarding the taste, and we're interested to know if people uh, 
are liking the new taste of the orange uh, or whether they are disliking it. Uh, so we have some categories there for you to fill in. Um, our next question is asking about dosage change. Um, so we're interested to know uh, if their dose had changed and if it did, by how much. Um, and we're interested also to know why, what was the reason for that change. Um, we have several options there um, to avoid using other opioids because it wasn't addressing their pain needs. We also have a other selection. If there's an answer that they give that's not provided here in our options, you can simply write that in there. Our question number five is asking if they need to take additional opioids. These could be things that are either prescribed to them, uh, such as morphine, or things that, are, that they are taking that are not pre prescribed to them, such as a friend's uh, bottle of morphine or some other substance. Um, some people may say that they supplement their uh, methadose with crack or using uh, you know, uh, marijuana or some other substance, and you can simply select, I supplement with other street drugs. We don't need to know what the specific street drugs are. Uh, again, if they have taken some additional opioids, we're interested to know in the reason why. Uh, is it because they're experiencing withdrawal and feeling dope sick, or is it to uh, relieve some pain? They might give you one option, or they may give you several options. You can select all that apply. Um, the next set of questions are just sort of asking about their experiences around feeling dope sick, uh, whether they find that their pain needs are being addressed, uh, we're also interested to know how they first heard about this about this change. That might be difficult for some people to think back all the way to February or perhaps even before February. Um, but to the best of their knowledge, how did they, you know, first hear of this? Um, for this particular question, question number ten, we'd like you just to select one option. Uh, if they really can't remember, then simply select I don't know and move on. Um, questions 11 and 12 are for people who have carryouts, um, so that is that they're not going to the pharmacy every day to receive their medication. Uh, they actually have uh, carries, sometimes that's for a week, sometimes that's for longer. And we'd like to know what do people do uh, with their empty bottles. Um, we're interested to know whether they uh, keep them in a locked box um, and how they dispose of those bottles. Uh, if someone is accessing the pharmacy every day, then you can simply select, say, don't have carryouts for those two questions. After that, com after the completion of this survey, uh, you are done, uh, unless you are a part of Vancouver Coastal Health, in which case we have an additional set of questions that I'll be going through next. So the people in the Vancouver Coastal Health catchment area will be asked a separate set of nine questions uh, that are particularly of interest to Vancouver Coastal Health. Um, here our questions are directed around uh, use of the supervised injection site, people's experiences uh, accessing the supervised injection site, or reasons why they don't access that site, um, as well as uh, assessing whether uh, there would be some willingness to uh, be in support of a safer inhalation room. It's very important to note, uh, especially for clients who are conducting this survey in more rural areas or areas that may not be directly accessible to peer-run services or inside of the Dr. Peter Center, um, that just because these questions are being asked, it does not necessarily reflect a planned service that would be coming to your area anytime soon. Um, it's very important that we, we don't give people some, some false hopes or some false knowledge um, around expected services. Um, so it's, it may be a good idea to uh, reiterate what is stated at the top of this survey, which says the following questions will help us understand your needs and experiences. They don't necessarily reflect planned service changes, as those changes may not be a priority or a possibility in your community. Um, again, if anyone of your participants or your staff or anyone uh, you know, involved in this survey process had any questions in, in regards to this, they may contact Sarah Young at BCH or they can contact me at the BCCDC and my email and my phone number are provided in the survey instruction letter. After this completion, that is the end of the survey. Uh, thank the participants for their time. Uh, their input is very valuable and will be used to evaluate and make any changes that we are able to um, to improve services across BC. Thank you. Take care.